Hi, my name is Pete from PJG Creations and today I'm going to give you a quick introduction on how to get started with assembly language programming using uh, the Apple II and the Merlin macro assembler. First things we're going to need is Apple Win, which is our emulator for Windows. We're going to need Cider Press, which is a disk image utility for Windows, which allows us to be able to create and manage Apple format disks. And we're also going to need the Merlin assembler. So first place to go is if you go to GitHub, we'll find the Apple Win repository on there. So go ahead and go to github.com, Apple Win, Apple Win. If you scroll down, there's a link here for the latest release. If you download that to somewhere on your desktop and save that for later. Next thing we're going to need is Cider Press. So if you go to github.com forward slash fadden cider press, then you'll find the cider press repository just here. You can build it yourself, of course, or if you go to the a2ciderpress.com website, then you'll find a pre-built version here for Windows XP and later, which works fine on Windows XP all the way through to Windows 10. So if you go ahead and download that to your desktop somewhere, save that for later. Then we're going to need a version of Merlin. I'm going to be using version 2.43, uh, which uh, is just a slightly simpler version. Uh, there's, there's a few other versions that allow you to have a full screen editor, uh, but we'll concentrate on version 2.43 for now. So if you go ahead and download that, save that somewhere on your desktop as well, then we're pretty much ready to go. So I've got a folder on my desktop and I've downloaded Apple Win, Cider Press, the Merlin Assembler and I've extracted each of those into their own directory. Uh, Apple Win, all you need to do is have that somewhere here because it doesn't need to be installed. Cider Press, you need to install that so if you go ahead and install it um, it should automatically create you an icon. If it doesn't it'll be in your program files uh, Fat and Soft Cider Press in there. If you extract your Merlin Assembler then you should have the disk for that as well. I've created handily some uh, shortcuts on my desktop. So the first thing we're going to want to do is create a DOS boot disk. Uh, that's going to allow us to boot into Apple Basic to be able to create a blank disk to be able to save our assembler files on later. So if you go into CiderPress, then you should get a window something similar to this, and we're going to want to create a new disk image. We want DOS 3.3. This is going to allow us to boot into Apple Basic. You can leave the whole rest of this the same. So I'm going to call this DOS 3.3. And you can leave it as .do. And that'll automatically create us a nice uh, disk image that we can open up then in Apple Win. So if you close out of Cider Press and open up Apple Win, first time you load it, you might get a GNU agreement. Just go ahead and click OK. So we want to boot into Apple Basic so that we can create ourselves a new uh, disk we can save our assembler files on later. So if you go ahead and click on the first disk icon and we want our DOS33.do file here. So if you open that, that'll load our DOS33 disk into the first disk location in our emulator. The Apple will boot any disks which are in the disk drives upon a reset and that's what this button here allows you to do. So if you hit that you'll get a beep you'll see that briefly the Apple II and then you'll get this square bracket, closed square bracket here which denotes we're in Apple Basic. So now we need to create our blank disk. So if we go ahead and press the disk 2 icon what we need to do is create a blank disk and just press open. That's going to create us a, a basic blank disk, but it's not formatted yet, so we need to format it. And in Apple Basic, we do that by saying init, which is initialize, and then the name of our disk, so whatever we want to call it. I'm just going to call it blank. And if we hit a comma, we need to tell it that it's in disk 2. So if we do that and just wait for a second, then we'll get init blank d2. If we do catalog, blank. There we are. So that's our blank disk. So it's automatically switched to our second disk. So we can leave 
have a blank disc in the second drive but now what we want to do is start looking at Merlin. So if we left click on our DOS disk we can go in to our already extracted Merlin assembler disk and load up the first disk. Again as I explained earlier the way to boot any disk in the first drive is to hit the reset button. So if we reset it's going to ask us are you sure because we're going to lose data of course. Press yes. If we wait you'll see our Merlin Pro 2.43 command screen. Here we've got the facility to be able to catalog, which as I showed you earlier, shows the contents of a drive. We can load a source file, save a source file, append a file, read a text file, write a text file, change which drive we're referring to, enter the editor or the assembler, save some object code or quit. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is switch away from our Merlin disk drive into our blank disk. We do that by hitting D for drive change. Now you'll see we're in drive one at the minute. If we hit D, now we're in drive two. Fantastic, we can double check that by using C for catalog. And that's our blank disk that we saw earlier. It's asking us for a command. We can, we can do various different disk commands here, but all we want to do at that point is just hit return. That'll return us to the command screen. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is create our new assembly source file. We do that by hitting E to enter our uh, assembler or editor. So I press E and we're straight away we're in our editor. Now the first thing we want to do is append. We've automatically created a new file but we want to append some lines to it. So if we hit A and hit return then you'll see we're on line 1. That's denoted here by the 1. Uh, it's good practice to um, give some sort of comments about what file you're actually editing and Merlin gives us a few little shortcuts to be able to do that. The star or asterisk is used to denote a comment. So we want to make a block of stars across the top just to make a block of comment. You can do that by holding control and press P and you get a block of stars. If you just hit return now you'll be on line two. So the next thing we want to do is we just want to put a star at either end. So if you hit space and press Control and P again, then you'll get a star at either side. And we can just space across, and we're gonna call this, what, demo number one, and just hit Enter. And then same as before, Control and P, that'll create us the bottom line of that, and hit Enter or Return again. And just so that we tidy things up, we're gonna have a line in between our block comment at the top and our first line of code. So if we just press a star, and then enter again. Now the way the code's lined up is that the first column is labels. So we have things like the places you want to jump or the names of variables. And so the second column is our command or op code. The third column is our operand or the variable number or what we want to do with the op code. And then the fourth column is generally for comments. So the first thing we want to do is tell our code where it needs to live in memory. So if you hit space, we'll go into the opcode column. And we want to use the org command. That's going to tell the assembler where the origin of the code is. So if you hit space, then you're going to the operand column. And we want to start at 8000, which is a nice empty space that we can start from. So if you do that, and then just hit enter the dollar represents a hex value that's all that's telling us so how about we make this program do something really simple like beep we can do that because there's a built-in function within the apple memory that allows us to create a beep so we can do a we'll call it bell for now which is a label in the label column and then we use equ which means equate which means that that's going to mean that bell is equated to a value. Uh, the beep function lives at fbdd in memory. You don't need to worry too much about exactly where that is, but that's just a specific position in memory that uh, if we go there, it will make a beep. So the next thing we want to do is have the start of our code. So we'll call it start. And the only thing we want to do is jump to that bell routine. So we have JSR, which is jump, jump to subroutine. And we want to jump to bell. Easy enough. And then we can have end. 
And what we want to do here is just return straight back out because we don't want to live forever in our program. So we have RTS, which is return from subroutine. And that's pretty much everything. So you can see now if I hit enter on a blank line, I'll return to a command. And at this point, we can list our code if we like by hitting L and press enter. So we can see what our code looks like. And if we're happy enough with that, we can assemble it with ASM and hit enter. It's going to ask us if we want to update the source. We don't need to. Just press no and it'll assemble it. All being well, you should be able to see that it'll squirt out exactly what's going to happen. So at address 8000, we'll get these commands. And at address 8003, we'll get this command. 20 is JSR. DDFB is the location in memory of the bell routine, which we've equated to FBDD. It's backwards just because of how things live in memory. It loads the low byte and then the high byte. And so you can see that's what that means. And then we've got uh, our RTS, which is 8003, which is just returned for subroutine. So we've got four bytes, no errors. And the symbol table here, which I explained earlier, end is at 8003, starts at 8000, and bells at FBDD. So if you hit Q to quit back to the main screen, press Enter. We need to save our source. So if you hit S, and we'll call it Demo1. Because it's Demo1. And hit Enter. Wait for a second. Now you can double check that that's worked by hitting C. And you can see Demo1.S. It's automatically appended .S, which is .source. So if you just hit enter again, you'll return back to the command window. We need to save our object code now. Object code is our runnable program. So if we just press O, it's going to give us a little question here. It's asking us if we want to save it as demo1. So we're going to hit Y for yes, and it's going to save it. So if we go and press C again, now you'll see we've got just demo1 on its own, which is our executable program. So just hit enter, and we want to quit now. Now just to be sure, if we do catalog, we should see our blank and demo1.s, which is our source file, and then demo1, which is our program. And to run that, we do b run and then demo1. And what we're expecting here is just our program will go beep. So let's hit enter and see. Beep. There you are. There's your first ever 6502 Apple assembler program. Hope you enjoyed that. Good luck.